Welcome to my electron line. Now let's take a look at what we call the momentum density of electromagnetic radiation. Yes, electromagnetic radiation does have momentum, and so we can talk about the momentum it has per unit volume. Now the units of momentum, well, let's see here. That can be written as kilograms times meters per second, because after all, momentum is mass times velocity. Now, volume has units of cubic meters, which means if you take this divided by that, that gives you the units for momentum per unit volume, and that would be the momentum density. Which means that if this is the equation for the momentum density of electromagnetic radiation, the units of this should converge to kilograms meters per second per cubic meters. Well, let's find out if that's indeed the case. So here we have E times B, the electric field magnitude times the magnetic field magnitude divided by mu sub naught. Well, that we saw in the previous video, that is equal to the momentum of the instantaneous pointing vector. And that then represents the instantaneous intensity of the light, which means that this could be written as the intensity of the light divided by the speed of light squared. Now, when we take that, we can find the units of intensity, the units of the speed of light squared, and that should converge to kilograms meters per second divided by meters cubed. Well, let's find out. Intensity is watts per square meter, and then we divide that by the speed of light, but that's in the denominator, and it's the speed of light squared, so let's move it to the numerator by taking the inverse of that. So instead of writing meters per second, we write seconds per meter, and we have to square it, of course. That means we have seconds squared in the numerator and meters squared in the denominator. Those are the units, the inverse of the units of the speed of light, velocity, and because it's a denominator, we simply switch it around. Now we have a meter to the fourth in the denominator, so let's factor out a meter cubed in the denominator and see what we have left. So this can be written as watts second squared divided by meters and times 1 over meters cubed. So we already have the unit that refers to the per volume, per unit volume. Now does this converge to intensity? Intensity, that would be, oh, not intensity, I'm not looking for intensity, I'm looking for momentum. So we need kilograms, meters per second. All right, well, let's convert watts. Watts is a joule per second, so this can be written as joules per second times second squared times meters. Of course, we still have the 1 over meters cubed. That means that this second cancels out that second. Now a joule is a newton meter, so let's make that conversion. This can now be written as newton meters seconds divided by meters, and we have 1 over meters cubed. Now this meter cancels out that meters. Now we convert newtons. A newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. And then we multiply times seconds, and of course we can't forget the 1 over meters cubed. And then this second cancels out that seconds, and now when you look, here we have kilograms times meters per second, mass times velocity, times 1 over m, therefore divided by volume. So we do indeed get kilograms times meters per second divided by meters cubed, which means that the original equation right here does indeed indicate that this is the equation for the momentum per unit volume, or what we call the momentum density of electromagnetic radiation. And that's how it's done.